morning. This is Kellyland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Investigators in Fort Pier are looking into what sparked a fire at a truck repair business. The assistant chief for the Fort Pier Fire Department says it happened around 2 o'clock Tuesday morning at Inland Truck Parts and Service. Heavy smoke was coming from the building and some semis were inside. The fire, to fire did spread into the ceiling of the building. The Minnehaha County Coroner released a report on the number of deaths in 2022. The top two causes were drugs and gunshot wounds. The coroner also says the county is starting to see meth and fentanyl mixed together. The report also included the deaths of six infants, including one from homicide. There were also 25 suicides in 2022. Heart disease was the most common natural cause. You can see a full breakdown of the coroner's report right here on Kelloland.com. Officials in Millette County are raising concerns after a recent dog attack sent someone to the hospital. This comes around eight years after a woman in the area was killed by a pack of dogs. Millette County Sheriff Mike Blum says they don't want to see something like that happen again. To prevent further harm, Blum says that any dogs running free within the sheriff's office jurisdiction will be destroyed. He advises people to keep their pets in fenced yards or on leashes and under control. Blum spoke with Kelloland News about the decision and the history behind it. You can hear more from him in a Kelloland.com original by Jacob Newton online now. The former Sturgis Brown High School Activities Director has lost his license to teach in South Dakota after allegedly posting pornographic images on Twitter. According to a Department of Education report, Todd Palmer was in charge of updating the Meade School District's athletics Twitter account. In December 2021, he started a second account using the same phone number, which meant anyone who followed the athletics account got a notification. The report says the new Twitter account contained numerous pornographic images of Palmer and his wife. Palmer lost his job a short time later. Turning to weather now with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Good morning, Brian. All right, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Our weather today, another fine day in the forecast. Yesterday, boy, it was sure nice. Sunshine, we made it up to about 39 in Sioux Falls. And we also were able to make some 50 degree readings happen there from Rapid City to Pier. I think it's going to be pretty similar to that today. Folks in Pier might be just within a degree or two of 50. Sioux Falls, well, trying to hit 40. We'll come close. 43, though, in Yankton and 50 in Rapid City. There's a front on the move tomorrow. A lot of wind, maybe some nuisance snows as well. We'll get into that story coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Brian. A bill that would require violent offenders to serve all or at least 85% of their prison sentences is moving forward in the South Dakota legislature. The Senate Judiciary Committee endorsed SB 146, sending it to the full Senate. The bill sponsor presented statistics indicating that violent felons are serving one quarter to one third of their average sentences. However, the South Dakota Association of Criminal Lawyers worries the state's overcrowded prisons won't be able to handle the increase. The 211 Helpline Center has come a long way since it opened its doors more than two decades ago. The center went statewide in 2020 and since then has assisted people from across South Dakota. Then last year it became part of the new 988 suicide hotline. Vice President of Program Development Betsy Schuster says the center took more than 70,000 calls, texts and emails last year for all kinds of issues. Housing, specifically rent payment, and then within food, um, food pantry, um, where those are located are two of our top needs that we identify through 211. This Saturday is National 211 Day. The center will continue working to provide assistance and raise awareness for the center throughout 2023. We recently brought you a story on a two-year-old Brookings girl battling a rare and fatal genetic disease. We talked with Sanford Research about Batten disease and what researchers are learning in the search for a treatment. Sloan Murfield was diagnosed with the CLN1 Batten on January 20th. According to Sanford Research, there are up to 15 different types of Batten, and in Sloan's case, she has the most severe strain. Batten disease is a group of different diseases uh, where there's a genetic defect, which means the individual who inherits that genetic defect um, has a missing nut or bolt, as I call it, or a missing protein, a missing piece that's essential for cell functioning. The Murfields say they are still at a loss for words and thankful for the support they've seen from the community. 
They will continue to learn more about Sloan's disease with more testing and appointments. There are also more benefits now planned for the family in addition to the GoFundMe, which is attached to this story on Kevaland.com. A fitness challenge in Brookings has people working out for a good cause. 14 years ago, Angela Thompson lost her son, Tristan, in an airplane accident. Now she's helping people reach their fitness goals, all while raising money for local kids who want to play sports in the area. Um, as far as Tristan goes, he was really getting into that stage of um, activities and things like that. And, and I know how hard that can be um, with expenses and things like that. And um, just through his memory, I want to be able to give back to, to others. The challenge runs until February 25th, along with raising money for sports scholarships. Each team participating is also raising money for local charities in the Brookings community. Let's look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather today, well, looks pretty quiet, but tomorrow... A little snow around. It looks like if you track uh, the specifics here, this is going to start up this evening in the Black Hills. We are going to expect some accumulations. Your best bet's probably the northern Black Hills. Probably a couple of inches, maybe a bit more up toward Lee Deadwood. And then during the day tomorrow, some snow bands will try to appear on radar, mainly south of I-90s where your best chance will be. Nothing big there, but the fact is that, yeah, even a little snow combined with some of that wind, that's going to be our biggest talking point. Temperatures today look fine. We've got 50s in that pocket from Pier to Rapid City. Sioux Falls again coming in pretty close to 40, maybe just a couple degrees shy of that. Tonight's weather, again, that focus in the west first. I expect Sioux Falls will be dry, but... By uh, tomorrow morning, you know, there could be a couple of spots here and there in the east. I would say for the most part, we're avoiding any significant impacts. But by late morning, it's that uh, little bit of a strip of blue there on radar. And that's what we're going to watch as temperatures probably slide through the 20s. And yes, the wind is definitely making an appearance. Here's a closer look at that. Rapid City is going to have a high wind watch here after midnight. And you can definitely see why when you see the numbers popping up to 50 miles per hour at 2 in the morning. And I think Sioux Falls will start off with a northwest breeze, probably 10 to 20 early. But it's not going to take long. And uh, we're looking at 40 mile an hour wind gusts at 10 a.m. That's very widespread. And by after lunch, Sioux Falls could start going close to 50 miles per hour. So that's my main reason why I bring up that snow forecast, because even a little bit of snow with the wind, it's going to be blowing it sideways. Thank goodness we're not looking at anything heavy here, but certainly enough wind to some issues. That's, by the way, winding down Thursday night. And then after that, it's just going to be a little colder on Friday. And then we're going to get right back on track for the weekend. Some milder temperatures ahead. 39 today, Mitchell in your Kettleland Live Doppler HD forecast. 41 in Valentine, 50 degrees in Rapid City. Here's a look at your seven day forecast after mid 20s on Friday. We're back to the middle 30s on Saturday and Sunday. Mid and upper 30s likely Monday and Tuesdays. So I can detect a little more melting going on in that time period. We're looking at Aberdeen also pretty similar to Sioux Falls. A lot of 30s. Again, we'll do some slow melting over the course of that seven day forecast. And your pier forecast after that blip on radar tomorrow and a brief cool down with the wind. We're back on track close to 50 on Saturday and not far from that range Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Rapid City should easily bounce back into the 50s at times starting again on Friday and Saturday. Check out details with the rest of your weather online at Kelloland.com.